So my D&D players have a problem. You see, I like to run adventures that have a gothic theme or horror to them. So ideally, I want my players to overcome their fears and take them head on. But instead of facing their fears head on, they decide to go ahead and call on allies like the city guard, for instance, or some other adventuring party for help. And look, I get it, it happens. But when it happens for every single villain, it gets a little bit much, but it's not their fault. In this video, I'm going to talk about how I deal with this problem, and maybe you can adapt this into your game too. To preface this video, I am not trying to shame my players for asking for help. However, it does become a problem when the game becomes more about the NPCs and the allies versus the heroes and the players themselves. Otherwise, this would just be me writing a novel and playing with G.I. Joes fighting Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Recently, my players just had an arc where they had to deal with Star Spawn who crash landed right outside of a major city. At this time, the Star Spawn were led by a character known as the Prophet, a Star Spawn emissary that would take, kidnap local villages and tribes and assimilate them and enslave them basically into their cult. When the players finally made it to the Prophet's dungeon, it was a mega dungeon. They were surprised by how many levels and monsters that were roaming around that they had to fight through or get around. So at the end, they realized that it was too much and they decided to go to the Adventurer's Guild for help on their quest. I hope you can see where this is going. So if the players had another adventuring party accompanying them, the other adventuring NPCs have potential to take away moments, epic moments especially, from the main party. It makes combat super annoying and honestly I would rather just scale back the number of monsters that the characters are fighting instead of having to generate five monster or NPC stat blocks. So how do you stop NPCs from taking away player spotlight? First off, I never make the NPCs stronger than the players. By nature, in case you didn't know, D&D is designed for the players to have a lot more abilities than monsters. For example, if I took the 5e monster manual guide for a goblin and I tried to create a goblin using the player options, obviously the player character will have more options than the NPC goblin. You'll see players have things like Fury of the Small, for example. Obviously, the NPC should be good for their main features. Obviously, the NPC rogue should have a higher lockpicking ability than, let's say, the fighter in the party. An NPC fighter should be really strong or really fast, not really good at perception or charisma. They should have those features built into their character and their stats, especially when you're in combat. They shouldn't have any higher dex or strength or any ability that is greater than the party, unless it's their main feature. But Francis, you might be asking, what about high profile allies? What if they recruited the arch priest of the Temple of Cord, for example, and they're accompanying the party? Yeah, that's the case. But remember, you are in control of the NPC. They have clutch abilities but they're not there to replace the party. And also, dungeon masters, you have to nerf them somehow. Whether it's by having them do less in combat, maybe they have less health at the start of combat, or maybe you give them a handicap by taking away their spellcasting ability. Maybe the players get separated from the high profile NPC before the main boss fight. Or maybe the big bad evil guy killed them off when the players weren't looking. Wink! <laughs> but that's the end of the ramble. I hope that you found this video uh, somewhat useful. If you're wondering why NPCs are built differently than the player characters, uh, you should definitely check out that video right over here. When I find this out, it literally blew my mind.